And this bump that you can see, that's the bone. That's the contour of his bone. And as Oliveira just puts more stress on it here, I feel like you really can see how it's just stretching and stretching and stretching until finally in the round occurs. Welcome back everybody, I'm Dr. Brian Suter and this is your number one source for learning about the unique medical side of the world of sports. I'm amazed first off that Ferguson didn't tap on this because this is extremely painful for not only his elbow but also his shoulder and second, I'm amazed that his arm didn't physically dislocate or break here. We'll break down the anatomy and talk about why in this video. As always, if you enjoy learning about this unique side of sports, please consider subscribing and be sure and go follow me over on Twitter for more real-time breakdowns and analysis. So as Oliveira starts off the armbar here, initially there's not as much stress on Ferguson's elbow, but a lot of the stress here is first being applied up to his shoulder. That levering position where Oliveira is basically pulling his forearm backwards is basically trying to lever or push Ferguson's shoulder to dislocate anteriorly or forward out of its socket. So not only is this gonna impart some stress at the elbow that we'll see in a minute, but this is a ton amount of stress up at Ferguson's shoulder that most guys would tap just from that. As we continue through the sequence here, again, we can see as he rotates, still we're starting to get a little bit of hyperextension on Ferguson's elbow, but not as severe as we're gonna to get to in a minute. But again, look at just the insane amount of stress that's being applied up at Ferguson's shoulder. Oliveira's left leg here is pushing backwards on Ferguson's chest, causing him to rotate even more to put additional stress on this shoulder. If Ferguson were able to be flatter on his back here in this position, that would take some of the stress off of his shoulder and wouldn't be as painful. But now because of the amount of surface contact that Oliveira's leg is making with the back of Ferguson's arm, that's gonna basically shift the fulcrum or the bending point of his arm up closer to his elbow and we can see then as Oliveira starts to crank even more, this is where we really start to get that stress, that hyperextension load on Ferguson's elbow. Now in this position though, one of the primary stabilizers of the elbow joint is between the olecranon of the ulna and the humerus. We'll show you that in our anatomy here in a minute, but basically it's at this position, it's basically bone hitting against bone along with some of the soft tissue ligaments, but really that bony stop is part of what makes it harder here for Oliveira to continue that hyperextension. Now, as you can see him switch positions here, this was when it started to get really bad. He tucks Ferguson's arm between his, allowing him to get even more leverage, and now we can really see that hyperextension come into Ferguson's elbow. You can even see here this little bump that we can see is the bone of Ferguson's elbow and I feel like watching this in real time, you could really almost see those ligaments just continuing to stretch. And I really think if this would have gone on even just a couple more seconds, this could have been catastrophic for Ferguson and he would have eventually just destroyed his elbow. We'll play this back here in a little bit more regular speed, but just focus, I mean, this bump that you can see, that's the bone, that's the contour of his bone. And as Oliveira just puts more stress on it here, I feel like you really can see how it's just stretching and stretching and stretching until finally the end of the round occurs. So this is a right arm that we're looking at to match the one of Ferguson's here. And I'm just gonna go through some structures and hide them. Of course, here up in the very front, we have the biceps muscle. Deep to the biceps, we have the brachialis. And we can actually see the bicep muscle contour when we go back to the fight. If we look at when Ferguson's arm is in this position, this sort of contour you see in the skin, that top muscle there, that's his bicep, just to give you some orientation. His triceps is gonna be sitting back here. So if we go back then to our anatomy, we've hidden some of these muscles. Again, on the backside of the arm here, this is gonna be where you have your triceps. Your triceps comes down and inserts onto this bump of your ulna called your olecranon. Whenever guys are throwing elbows, that's that really sharp protuberance that we have on the back of our elbow that's called the olecranon, and it's actually part of one of our forearm bones called the ulna. So we'll hide the triceps here, and now we're starting to see more of those passive restraints of the shoulder joint. Getting down into the muscles of the forearm, here on the outside, we first have the brachioradialis. If you basically sit and you kind of clench your arm up, that's this top muscle that sits here on the outside of your forearm, so we can hide that one. Now, on the inside of the elbow here, coming off, we have the group of wrist and finger flexor muscles. These run all the way down to the hand and the wrist, and they're the muscles that help us make a fist and flex our wrist back. So we'll hide all of these different muscles. Coming around then to the lateral or outside of the elbow, now we have the extensor muscles. So the muscles on the backside are the ones that are gonna raise our wrist up and straighten our fingers out. So we can hide all of those muscles. 
And now we're getting down into really the meat of those structures that are affected here for Ferguson. The first primary stabilizer that's gonna be stretched here in this position when Ferguson is having that hyperextension on his elbow is gonna be this capsule of the joint, specifically the anterior or front portion of the capsule. This capsule is sort of a fibrous type of tissue that wraps around the elbow joint, including in the backside, to provide additional stability and support. We have capsules throughout our body at our different joints. If we hide our capsule, then we can look a little bit more specifically at all the different ligaments, again, running between bones that provide stability. If we look here on the inside of the elbow, this is where we see our UCL, or the ulnar collateral ligament complex. This is actually a group of three ligaments. These are the ligaments that people tear when they have Tommy John surgery. Those ligaments run from a little spot on the humerus called the medial epicondyle, down onto the ulna. It's hard to say 100% which exact kind of bony prominence this is that we're seeing on Ferguson. I think because of the angle that Oliveira is applying this force, there's a little bit more of like a valgus bending outward. And I think this could actually be this medial epicondyle of his humerus, just based on kind of where the point is, there's a little bit of a contour going up the rest of his arm over here. I don't think that it's the olecranon here on the very backside of the elbow because it just doesn't really match. His bicep muscle is up here, his tricep would be running down below it, and the tricep actually inserts on that olecranon. So I think this little bump that we're seeing is actually this medial epicondyle. You can feel it on the inside of your arm yourself here. If we then turn and look on the outside of the elbow, this is where we have more of these stabilizers. These are gonna be the radial collateral ligament complex, and then a specific ligament called the annular ligament. This annular ligament runs around the radius, and it's sort of what allows our elbow to pronate and supinate, and so all these ligaments work together to provide passive stability and support for the elbow joint. Now again, if we look back at the clip here when Ferguson had his elbow bent like this, I really do think that that little bump we can see is more of his medial epicondyle as opposed to the very backside of his elbow. If that's the case, then what this means is that a lot of this bending that Oliveira is applying isn't as much hyperextension as it is a valgus stress. So if I'm looking head on, a valgus stress is when my elbow goes out to the side this way. And we actually have a little bit more freedom to move that direction than just the pure hyperextension. Either way though, this is crazy to see his elbow move like this. I'm sure he's got some stretching of those ligaments. I wouldn't be surprised if he completely tore some of those ligaments within his elbow. I'm also surprised, like I said, that he didn't injure something up in his shoulder just with the amount of torque that gets transferred all the way up through that arm. If we get any update about what exactly happened here with Ferguson, I'll try to make an update video for you all. But for now, I hope you found this video educational and interesting. Let me know any questions or comments down below. And until next time, we'll see you later. Bye.